I'm just doing a little bit of a molding experiment, making an injection mold for this little plastic worm I've made and stuck in this mold box, which I'll explain all that in a minute. The experimental pot is not really the materials I'm gonna use, which is five minute epoxy and plaster, something that's kind of readily available and cheap to buy. But more how I use them together, this hopefully should give me a very rigid mold, which I can inject hot soft plastic into to give me some small worms and other soft plastic baits. To make the worm, which will be the master, I used a low melt plastic called Polymorph. This is something that can be bought online for a few pounds or at a hobby shop. If you're a regular to this channel, you may have seen me use this to make fake corn fishing baits for catching bream and carp. It normally comes in pellet form and softens in hot water that's over 60 degrees, turning almost translucent. I'm using a Pyrex dish and a small ring but a jug kettle and a cup would do the same job. After softening up some polymorph, I rolled it out onto a flat, smooth surface, snapping bits off until I had roughly the length I wanted. And with a wide hair comb, I rolled on some ribs or lines. Polymorph isn't always the easiest thing to handle. It has the consistency of somewhere between snot and chewing gum, depending on the temperature. But the great thing is, if I mess up, I can just remelt it and start again. As worms are relatively easy to make, I thought I'd make a few and kind of pick the best one out. To turn this into something I could use, I needed to make an injection point. For this, I heated up some more polymorph and rolled it into a small ball. From there, I could roll one side on the surface until I had a pear or a teardrop shape, and then I partially flattened it with a ruler. Later, this will attach to a piece of 15 millimeter copper, so I just needed to check that it was larger than the copper. To attach this to the worm, I heated both ends up in the hot water again. Then it was just a case of kind of pushing them together and fiddling round a bit until I had some kind of smooth joint. For the other end of the worm, I needed to add a vent. So I heated up a sewing pin and pushed that into the end before cutting it off with some pliers. For a mold box, I stole a bit of Lego from the kids and put a layer of blocks upside down onto some boards. Then with some plasticine or modeling clay, I filled in the area and rolled it flat with a bit of pipe before trimming off any excess with a craft blade. I pushed the master into the clay, pressing it down until it roughly reached halfway. With a small dental tool, I pushed the clay back up against the body where it had splayed out and made sure I had a pretty clean line. Then with the end of a paintbrush handle, I added some dimples as keys to lock the mold together later. I added another two layers of blocks and then opened the Vaseline and painted on a thin layer over the modeling clay and also up onto the Lego, but really keeping it off the worm. So the mold's pretty much prepped and ready to go. I've got one of these twin packs of rapid set epoxy. This I've picked up on offer at the local supermarket. And it comes with one of these little mixer nozzles, which means once I've pumped it out, it's pre-mixed and ready to go. I'm gonna use this to, to put down a thin layer of epoxy over the surface of the bait and the mold area. That should pick up all the detail and also that glossy surface of the plastic. I'm gonna get on with it. You don't really get a lot of time with this stuff, about five minutes before it starts to turn to toffee. So I pretty much dumped on half the syringes and pushed the gunk about a bit with the back of another paintbrush until it looked like I had a reasonably even but thin layer. Before it began to set, I added some countersunk wood screws to the epoxy to help fix it to another layer of material I'll be adding later. So that's had about 15, 20 minutes and it's really started to set up and, and it's still a bit tacky, but it's pretty much firmed up. Um, I need to put a backing on that because that's a very thin coat and as a mold, it's not gonna be strong at all. I could use pretty much anything that's kind of liquid and set, plaster of Paris, probably wood filler would do. 
uh, as, as well as anything. But what I'm going to use is this, which is a, a plaster based product. And instead of mixing it with water as you would with plaster of Paris, it comes with an acrylic liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of follow the instructions and mix some of this up and get it poured onto the back of the mold. Jessmonite is measured out by weight at one part liquid to two and a half parts powder. I made a guess at about 30 grams of liquid and 75 grams of powder and then mixed it up into a slurry and poured it on. Having left it a few hours to harden up, I broke the boards off the mould box and that first layer of blocks, which meant I could remove the modelling clay and I did spend a fair amount of time removing any hangers on, especially from where that joint was going to be. Again I added another two layers of bricks and added some more Vaseline to the surface of the epoxy and also up the sides of the Lego bricks but kept it off that worm as I wanted to keep the detail. It was then just a case of repeating what had gone before. I added a layer of epoxy with screws but this time I also added a 40mm piece of 15mm diameter copper to the inlet. Then it was backfill with more of the jesmonite and leave it to cure for a few hours. So this is the kind of nerve wracking part of getting a rigid mould apart. Um, hopefully I've done the best I can and everything should come apart. I've taken the Lego off the mould and, and scraped the sides of the mould in case any resins run past the other and is going to create a mechanical hold. And I'm going to use a little craft blade just to see if I can prise the two parts of the mould apart. Fingers crossed. Oh, oh, that might have been just a little too easy. The second part is actually getting the original out of the mould. And hopefully that will go as easy as before. Let's just try the front. Ah, there we go. There we go. And yeah, that back bit's a bit stuck in. That's not really critical. I think I'll just use a bit of brute force and pop that out. What I'm gonna do is just take out this bit of resin that's covering the inlet. I just do that with the, the blade again. It kind of all goes back together nicely. I'm gonna leave this though a bit to, to fully harden up. This epoxy does take a bit of time. In the end, curiosity got the better of me and with the chance of going fishing early the next morning, I heated up some soft plastic and got on with it. I thought I'd go for a red with a splash of silver, but dumped a little more into the mix than I wanted and ended up with a kind of purple haze. To hold the mould together, I used a couple of plastic gripper clips and half filled the copper spout. Then with a piece of dowel I'd found, which was a snug fit, I applied a little bit of pressure, but not a lot. A minute later, it had cooled enough for me to open the mould and I had a worm. The detail was really great and the mould was quick to clean so I could shoot up again. And it didn't take long before I had a little handful. The next morning I took the train across town to do a bit of street fishing on a section of canal. I couldn't really help but be struck by the huge contrast from where I'd been fishing a couple of weeks before on the island of Mull. But I was holding a fishing rod and had some fish to chase so I was happy. I pretty much stuck to drop shotting along the walls, picking out hidey holes where perch were likely to hold up and it didn't take me long to scare up some little stripy monsters with the worms. I really had a great few hours messing about with nothing big caught but it was great to go from making something one day to fishing it the next. And for a first attempt it really worked out better than I'd imagined. I'd really like to try and make some other baits using this moulding technique. So if you've got any ideas that you'd like me to try, please leave a comment below. And also thanks again for watching.